Let's the wind blow high. Let's the wind blow low. Ha 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 it don't need to be like that. You keep on, I'll call my mum. <laughs> you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? De Niro, shut your face, you dosser, you sausage. King Charles had a successful operation this morning after having his crown released from over his ears. Adrian, I love you. Adrian, I love you. And if you look... Up high in the sky with your telescope to Jupiter, you can see Johnny Ward just starting out in his new radio show. Ah, uh, uh, just like <laughs> Quality tracking bike, that's what the game's all about. Dia Wolfo. I give John Ryder the utmost respect. He is a warrior. Stop me! Someone's make me bread pudding! You know what it is? The dog. Laying amongst a group of gorillas is quite nice until they start getting a bit frisky. I love a lassie, a bonny bonny lassie. Shut up, you lunatic. This is my latest song, ladies and gentlemen. I'm up. My legs shaking. My lips are, my lips are, my lips are twitching. <laughs> oh, Elvis, you know, funny. You might be loud. The war is over. The battle is over. It is finished. Thank God that me and my wife have come to some conclusion. Thank God you ducked. I'm here forever. I'm here forever. I'm here. Hoo-ha! Ladies and gentlemen, with thousands in attendance and millions watching around the world, here's Johnny! So bad. Hey. It's a nicer place. Hey. Shut up in your face. That's a great. We're gonna do the better this time. I bet. Hey, what's the matter, you? Hey, gotta no respect. Hey. What do you think you do? Hey, why you look so sad? Hey, it's a not so bad. Hey. It's a nicer place. Hey. Shut up in your face. Okay, one more time for Mama, everybody. What's the matter, you? We're there, we've arrived. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Johnny Ward Radio Show. We've got a great show for you this afternoon. We've got Mick Jagger on talking about the passing of the great Tina Turner. Boxing correspondent, John Fury. We've got a Scottish correspondent talking about all things in Scotland. And also, we need we need you to ring in. We need our phone callers to have a chat about what's going on elsewhere in the world. Oh, here go the phones. Line one, David. David in Ke- David the activist. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, John. Hello, David. What are you up to? Been causing... Wasn't you this weekend, David, was it? At the, the Chelsea Flower Show, throwing all the orange dust everywhere? <laughs> yeah, it was me, John. Oh, David. It was the, People were looking at... Trying to enjoy their self. I know, but I need to do is laugh, you know? You know, they didn't even do nothing to us. You know, they just left us there. There's no, no coppers there or nothing. You're very lucky, David. And you get away with something like that. Oh, we were... We was chased after by a load of big big blokes with um big branches. They was trying to bang us around the end of it and everything. But I'm a fast runner, John. Nah. Why do you do it? Is it boredom? <laughs> I think it is, John, after time. It's bored. I mean, I was going to go to Portugal next week for the Champions League final. Oh, no, David, please don't spoil that. I was going to jump on, on the back of that Erland Halland up top, you know, who plays for um, Manchester City. Cause get him off the pitch, glue myself to him, because I, I, I want him off. What, why would you want him off the pitch for? Well, I want him to Milan to win. I've had five hundred pounds on him. But if he stays on, it's called bloody loads of gold, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's only a love, John, isn't it? Well, not to a lot of people, ain't you know? A lot of people you messed up their weekend. Well, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. Anyway, John. Where did you go the weekend, John? I went to the Chelsea Flower Show and I got covered in orange dust. Oh my good God. All right, John, bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, some breaking news. Um, um, up in Scotland, from Scotland, our Scottish correspondent, Danny Griffin. Danny, signs of the Loch Ness Monster have came up again. 
Uh, very much so, John. Very much so. Um, various people over the weekend have seen the monster um, at its largest and at its biggest. Uh, John, uh, Danny, Danny, please, please. There's no luck in this monster. You know there's no. John, there is a monster. Pictures were taken of it. I've seen the pictures. It's all the stupid, grainy ones where you can't see it. It's stuck in the reeds and there's a bit of it. And it's total rubbish just to get people up there. You know what you Scottish people are like? You just want to get people up there and get their money. There's no need to be like that, John. This is this is every time I give you news from Scotland, you always make out that it's about the Scottish people. It's you and your ignorant... The way you think about us. It's no good. Oh, shut up. You shut up, John. You shut up. The Loch Ness Monster is alive and it's in the locks there. It's in one of the locks there and I have seen it. I've seen it on several occasions. Oh, and I suppose on all them occasions you didn't have a camera with you. Ah, there you go, your snide remarks. Typical, typical Englishman. Well, here, here you go. You know, I've got nothing against the Scottish people. Nothing against no one. You know, but you keep on out about this lost this monster. Lock this monster's been going on for bloody ages. Why don't you grow up? But grow up, grow up. Why don't you come up there with me one week? Oh, here we go again. Scotch is, Scotsman asking me up into the up into the Hebrides again with him. Okay, right. I've got to go now. Thank you very much, uh, Danny, and we'll try and contact you next week. That's our Scottish Boris correspondent, ladies and gentlemen, Danny Griffin. Yeah, yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go over to boxing world of our boxing correspondent. John Fury. John, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much, John. John, first of all, um, what I'd like to know, John, is um, Tyson, uh, your son, the fight seemed to be on, then off. You know, what exactly is going on there? Because nothing seems to be happening. Right. For the start, you're, sin you're insinuating that um, Tyson doesn't want to fight. No, I've not said that. No, but that's what you mean. I know what you mean, John. You're a snidey little bastard. And I'm not, well, look, there's no need for that, John, to come. I've invited you on this show, and I'll come on to your show every week, and I'll try to do the best I can. But you keep having these snide remarks. So just shut your gob and listen to what I've got to say. I come from a fighting family. I know that. Don't interrupt. I come from a fighting family. Me father, his father, all of us, all the Furies. And I just want you to understand that when you come from a fighting family... That means you've got a bit of violence in you. And you know from me, in a couple of shows I've been on, yes, I admit, John, I've lost my temper with you and I'll give you a good spanking. Well, I know, that was outrageous last week. But you're a good lad. You didn't call the coppers. Otherwise, I would have been doing a couple of years in clink for it. Well, I know, but my nose is still wonky. Got the left it has. Well, I'm sorry about that. But if you want me to continue on the show, I'll continue talking. What do you want me to do? Well, j sorry, John, yeah, just carry on what you're saying. Right, so I come from a boxing family. And you have got to understand, and all you... Who's that bloke in the glasses looking at me? It's all right, it's only the producer of the show. Tell him to get out. I don't like people looking at me. Right, uh, Peter, could you just go... Right, I come from a boxing family, and it's the Fury family, and I will fight any man, any man, you... I, I'll take me top off now. No, John, don't start that again, please. Take your top off now. I've taken me top off. I will fight you. I will fight this producer who's gone out. I will fight six of you. I will fight Deontay Wilder, Uskov. I will fight Tyson Fury, my son, and my other son. And the other sons, I can't remember. I've got so many. But I'm just telling you now. Just, John, no, just stop. No, I won't stop. John, can you get out of the studio? No, John. Ah, ah, John. Let, let. Weatherman Boomer. Hello, everybody. Boomer here, the weatherman. I got to say to you, uh, it is going to be very, very hot the next couple of days. So hot that I think you should all take your clothes off 
and walk around naked. You won't get nicked by the coppers because、uh, naked attraction is on the television and no one seems to get arrested there. So go out completely naked, let all your bits all wobble about. Nothing wrong with that. Get the sun to them, stretch them, all different areas, and get all the sun on your body. Will make you feel a lot, lot better. So, have a very good、uh, weekend. Don't forget to take an overcoat just in case you get thunderstorms. Because if you're walking around、uh, without overcoat completely naked, you could get all dribbles going down your private parts. And we don't want that. So, for me, Buma. Have a good weekend and enjoy、uh, whatever you do. Bye bye. Line two, Roger from Hackney. Hi, Roger. Hello, good afternoon. Oh, how are you, Roger? Yeah, I'm,、uh, I'm not too bad,、uh, John. Thanks very much for ringing in the show, Roger. Always a, a pleasure.、Um, what, what's going on at the moment? Well, um, um, just normal things as usual. Um, um, Got no money for the gas bill, got no money for. The- oh, Roger, you're not going to keep on about this again. I, I, you've asked me to ring in and I'm ringing in. I'm just an ordinary guy trying to get on in life. I'm in my flat in Hackney, as you know, and I've not got enough to pay the gas bill,、um, I, the phone bill,、um, you know, whatever happens. But I, 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 I still get very upset because I've done things in life, my dreams. And I don't get paid for it. Yeah, well, you told me about Oasis and don't look back in anger and, and all the other stuff. Yes, and something else has come up this week in, in, in politics. Oh, no, not politics. I said we wasn't going to talk about politics on the show. Well, let me tell you something. When, when Trump met Kim Jong un in North Korea, I was the one that set that meeting up. <laughs> you said me enough. How, can you, how do you know? See, yeah, I'm getting you laughing at me again as if you don't. Be- no, I do believe you. Please carry on the story. And I was asked by people because I was in the industry many years ago. What industry was you in?、I'm, that's secret. But I was asked to make a meeting between Trump and Kim Jong un. And I made the meeting. And that's a, I stopped a war, you know. I said to. Trump, round dinner, what would you like? A hog? Hog roast? And he said, I love hog roasts. And I got him a hog roast. And I said to、uh, Kim Jong un, what would you like? And I got him a pot noodle, a spicy one. Do you know, the evening was fantastic. They were about to have war, fire missiles at each other. And I saved it for a pot noodle and a hog. Did I get any thanks from that? Wow, I can't believe this, Roger. No.、Oh. Not a, pe- a lot of people don't believe it. Did I get anything for it? Any respect? Any honours? And the main thing, any money? No! Nothing! Nothing! Not a penny! I've had enough of it! Are you. Has he gone? I think he's gone. No, I'm not. Oh, he's still there! I am now. That's Roger from Hackney, ladies and gentlemen. Roger the fixer. Roger has invented and done many, many things, and he's very upset in his life that he doesn't get nothing for it.、Um, so, Roger, please keep ringing in. Please. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a legend with me.、Um, a sad passing of Tina Turner over the weekend. I've got here Mick Jagger. Mick, what a, what a terrible thing to happen. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, you know, I was a great friend of her, as you know. Oh, Mick, you know, some of the, one of the videos on stage where you, you dance with her and that. Oh, I mean, you know, when it comes to dancing and all that,、um, me, and, um, me and her, I will call her her, it's a she and a her and all that, like, you know. The thing about it is, me and Tina could dance. We could really dance, man. You know, she d o her thing up and down, and I do it. <laughs> and I think we stormed the world, and she was such a lovely person. I just adored her. I mean, she really was a lovely lady to me. We'd talk all the time. And、um, yeah,、uh, yeah, man. I've got, I've got to go now, John. I'm busy. Okay, Mick, thanks very much for coming in, please. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's our football legend time, and this week's guest is. The fantastic Glenn Hoddle from Tottenham Hotspur. Glenn, thank you very much for coming in. Yeah, it's fantastic, Johnny. Thank you. Glenn, obviously,、um, legend at Tottenham Hotspur.、Um, 
you know, you, you scored some fantastic goals for them. You know, how do you compare football today to what it was in, in your day? Yeah, you know, it was it was fantastic situations in my day. You know, it was different altogether. But you know, some of the players today, I don't think they're um, they're, I think they're more um, uh, fitter than we was in them days. Who would you say, Glenn, was your good friend, your best friend over the years in football? Oh, you know, it's got to be Ozzy Ardiles. You know, it's fantastic. You know, and and you know, we we go we go out and have dinner and we go to karaoke. And and does he sing, Ozzy? Oh, Ozzy does a great, you know, a great version of um, uh, uh, a Frank Sinatra song. You know. Start spreading the news. You know he's fantastic. Or he's you know you know I know he does it in his voice, but he's done the spreading the news. Um, you know I can't do it, but you know you know he's fantastic. You know he's. Oh, and what about when you was England manager, Glenn? You know how did you find the, the players? You know, you, you know, I'm going to be totally honest here. Some players, when you tell them about tactics, you know, they understand them straight away. You just have to tell them once. But some players are really thick as two planks. You know, I'm not going to name who they are, but you know, it's um, it really is strange sometimes. You know, it's something. You know, you just it's, it's um, you know, it comes to a situation sometimes where you have to say to them, you know, me manager, this ball, ball, England wear white shirts. You pass to the players in the white shirts, not the red shirts. Yeah, no, that that's how bad it gets. Wow. That's unbelievable. Yeah, you know, but that's the situation and as it is. But football today is a fantastic game and, I, you know, I still love it. Glenn, if I can just ask you this, um, when you recorded, uh, you'd done the um, the song years ago, but you see, you were singing quite a bit, wasn't you? You know, um, with Waddle and also with um, the England squad. Yeah, you know, I love I love singing, and um, you know, I wanted to make that a part of my career when I when I packed out football. I'd like to have been into singing. And did you get the opportunity? Yeah, you know, I was um, asked by a certain manager whether I'd go for an audition for the Rolling Stones. And, and what happened there? Well, they they loved the way I sung, but they said I was too ugly. Well, OK, Glenn, thank you very much, Glenn. Uh, this is Glenn Noble, ladies and gentlemen, Spurs and England manager and player. Thank you very much, Glenn. Glenn Oddle. Me bread pudding. Do you know who it is? The dog. This is my latest song, ladies and gentlemen. On my leg. I'm tw- it's twitching. On my lips. I'm so- my lips are twitching. <laughs> you really make me laugh, Elvis. This is Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King. Everybody in this world are dossers and sausages. Okay, I do love a sausage roll. You know. Oh, let the wind blow high, let the wind blow low. You really are a complete lunatic. If you look closely up into the atmosphere to the planet Pluto, you can see clearly Johnny Ward putting on his underpants. That's bloody rude, you know. I can say what I want, you big lump of a dripping. This is Al Pacino. The difference between living and dying, winning and losing, is a very small margin, John. So don't mess up your life. Ho ha! It is over! The war is over! Finally, me and my wife have come to some agreement. You really are a lunatic. You really are a sucker for punishment. God save the king. Are you talking to me, King? Are you talking to me, King? Are you talking to me? Hey! Hey! Leave me alone, you bloody bully! I am special one. Respect three Champions League. Respect! Respect! And the wife is going for the world record in Sainsbury. She's got the beans. She's got the chips. She's just coming up to where they pay. And now she's broke the world record! My wife has broke the world record! Honestly, I'm trying to have a cup of tea in a jam donut. It's like being in a lunatic asylum here. Ah! With thousands in attendance and millions watching around the world, here's Johnny. Line three, Nigel from Monaco. Hi, Nigel. Good afternoon. What seems to be the... Pro- got, what, what's up? What's up, I'm Nigel? What do you want to ask me? Well, you know, the reason I've rung again, Johnny, is because um, basically um, I've rung up before about these two idiots... David, the activist from Kent, and also Roger from Hackney. Now, how many times... Look, people are entitled to their own views. I know, but David from Kent, he's he's, he's bored to death. He's got multi-million pounds worth of properties. And and he goes round and... I'm fed up with it. 
ruins the flower show in Chelsea, which thousands of people go to every, every year, including King Charles. A lot of people say Prince Charles, but King Charles. And I'm fed up with it. So why don't you ban him from the bloody show? And as for the other moron, Roger from Hackney. Oh, he stopped a war did he, between Trump and Kim Jong-un. What a bloody liar. He's never done a day's work in his life. I'm university, I remember him there, nicking everyone's papers and so he could get top marks. He's a useless piece of paper. I'd rather not say. I'm fed up with it and I've had enough, Johnny. Oh, 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 Nigel's gone, Nigel's gone. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that is the end of this week's Johnny Wall Radio Show. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. From here, the, the show is going to be put on Twitter and there'll be a link there to YouTube. So please listen in every week. Thank you much. And I'd like to say to all of you, as I normally do every week, shut up your face. So bad, it's a nicer place